Well, it's so nice to meet you. You too, you too. Yeah. Pleasure. So, Lou, tell me about yourself. Who are you? My name is Kelsey Lou, and um, I'm a musical artist, performer, poet. Um, I consider myself a sculptor of sound um, through also visual language and worlds. Mm. And I'm originally from North Carolina, the American South, and that's definitely inspired a lot of my work, my exploration of home, mm. sort of departure of it, um, finding home inside, inspired by nature, life, nice. death. Yeah. Everything in between, all of that. Tell me about it. Amazing. Well, my name is Yin Ka. I'm, I'm an artist uh, based in London. Um, I'm a storyteller. I'm a dreamer. Um, I'm a architect of joy. You know, I like to sort of create spaces where joy lives and can be passed on. Um, I'm really inspired by people and sort of personal stories. I'm inspired by my British studied heritage. Um, and just, yeah, trying to sort of, you know, create joy uh, in sort of safe spaces for people to enjoy as a collective, as a community, um, and just trying to make memories um, in this world we live in. Um, and so how do we sort of pass on those stories to our loved ones or friends or people we don't know? Um, yeah, that, that's what inspires me is hearing people's stories and yeah, sort of reimagining public spaces. Yeah, yeah, that's beautiful. What do you find the most pleasure in when you are exploring joy within your work? I think for me, it's sort of traveling, like traveling and sort of learning about new cultures and hearing new stories, you know, going back to Nigeria to sort of see my parents, family. How about you? Yeah, I'd say traveling is a big part of it. With, with the sort of questioning and exploration of, of home mm -hmm. and the idea of that, I think that for me has come a lot from my departure of home. Mm -hmm. Leaving home um, when I was young and sort of going after my dream of not knowing exactly what that was, but going towards the arrow of something. And since then, it's led me to so many places all over the world. One of my practices that I love to do with traveling is collecting sounds. Mm -hmm. um, and then that's like just walking through the streets or parks are usually my favorite because you get a collection of nature sounds with the birds, but also the nature sounds of the people, different languages. And, mm. and that brings me a lot of joy. That's incredible. Yeah. What you said about sort of collecting sounds also sort of like makes me sort of think of a project I did a couple of years ago um, when I sort of first started, you know, creating uh, you know, objects. I was, I was sort of going around London and collecting chairs from like the skips and the side streets and I was obsessed with the stories of these objects like these chairs so I ended up sort of collecting like 100 chairs over like 10 years that I designed some that had been acquired by different museums but I was obsessed with kind of finding these kind of these chairs that were unloved in these kind of like dark and lonely spaces I sort of see all of these objects as people these chairs because they have stories so I would take these chairs into my studio um, and sort of give it a new sense of life a new narrative that's sort of personal to me so it was just like ongoing narrative and layers of stories in this one object um, that I would have in my studio. And it was quite personal because no one really knew what, this, what these chairs were about. Only me and the chair had this kind of personal story, this kind of connection, which I thought was quite special and powerful. So this idea of kind of, you know, of collecting sounds or objects or stories, I think, yeah, I definitely can connect and, and, and relate to that. Yeah. When you're kind of collecting these, these sounds, what, do you, what are you looking for? What, do you, what kind of... What are you trying to create from it? What are you trying to, what emotion are you trying to mm. evoke from it? Or do you hope that the user or the audience will feel from it? I think it's just adding a, a layer of life into it, spontaneity. YouTube or, um, you know, the databases, but there's something about collecting it, duplicate or replicate mm. anywhere. Um, you can look for a sample of a sound on YouTube or on, you know, the databases, but 
There's something about collecting it myself and just everyday life that makes me feel connected to, to it in a way that brings life into it. That's, un, that's like, a, like what you were saying with like your chair and your relationship with it. Yeah, and yeah. nobody may not know that, but there's something that people feel yeah. towards it. And I think there's like a magic within that. But as I've got older, I think I've been so busy with life and I don't really sort of reflect enough on my winnings or my losses or my experiences. Everything's just so fast paced. Yeah. So I'm finding myself now really kind of reconnecting with nature, birds, you know, the, the trees sort of withering, raindrops, just talking to people, listening, like hearing my thoughts, re reading, making notes. And I just find myself kind of more in touch with myself, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so that's been quite a new chapter in my work is, 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 is nature. Yeah. You know? But yeah. also it's like as kids, you know, children have a purity, they have a purity of self and yeah. awareness and of life and everything around you. And now being an adult, but also in your work, like you expressing joy, bringing joy to other people's lives, expanding the imagination for mm. children, for adults, but like for everyone. I started this series um, over, over lockdown um, called Hydra Harmonia. And it was my way of coping through everything that was happening and providing a sense of relief from that. And every day it was my ritual of watching the sun rise and set and documenting it. And it sort of, it was like a way of me to express in the moment instinctually how I was feeling. So the music that I made um, went along with the imagery that I captured. And I just sort of sat and played whatever came out. And then I built off of that. So it was a real sense of like trusting and releasing and letting mm. go. How comfortable are you kind of with, with you kind of putting your personal self in your work and sort of letting the world take it in? Because that's yeah. what I've always found quite hard is sort of, you know, is, is really kind of pouring my soul and my emotions into an object and, and the world gets to see it. You, yeah. How do you, do you find that quite difficult at all? Or are you kind of okay and you like, yeah, what is that, what's that like for you? I'm really inspired by vulnerability. Okay, wow. And sometimes I feel like I tricked myself. Like I didn't know mm. that I was being so vulnerable. I didn't know that I was putting my whole life out there. <laughs> I was just doing it. I was just doing what drove me. Um, and it happened to be me spilling my guts out for the world to see and mm -hmm. hear and listen to and read. And my album Blood is extremely personal. You know, it's about my relationship with my parents and their relationship with one another, my departure of them and I and bringing back together and, um, it's an extremely personal body of work, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I could definitely relate to that. Yeah, I mean, you know, like, I grew up in, in, in a Nigerian household that was very religious, strict, you know, strong cultural values, which in a way has sort of shaped me and sort of the man I am today Yeah. Um, in, in a number of ways. But I think I've always sort of found this kind of confusion, this sort of sense of, like, like belonging, where do I belong? Is sort of mm -hmm. Nigerian, more so British, mm -hmm. born in London, have this really yeah. rich heritage. You know, who am I? That, you know, I've got a Nigerian name, I eat Nigerian food, but I also eat bangers and mash and fish and chips. Yeah. I'm like, well, <laughs> it's, it's confusing, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, I think as a kid going back, to, you know, to Nigeria for the first, when I was like 11 or 12 for the first time, mm. was just like mind blowing, like kind of mm. seeing the culture, the heritage, the people, the language, mm. the smells, the, the sun, mm. you know, just, just that kind of rich energy. Absolutely. And I think culture and I think, you know, architecture and, and, and design, mm. I think, does make people feel uncomfortable. But that's what I mean. I'm here to do. I'm here to tell stories, I'm here to shake up space. I mean, it's also mm. kind of, you know, change the narrative of what people think mm. is theirs or is ours, you know? Yeah. So Absolutely. I can connect with you on that. Uh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Let's talk about disrupting spaces. Yeah.
and uh, yeah, reclaiming them, reclaiming the ideas of what things have been prescribed to be and for whom they're supposed to be for yeah. and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. You know, growing up playing classical music, I was usually like, you know, one of one or one of two uh, black persons in, in the orchestra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. And I love classical music. And it's always like, a, it's this sort of struggle between the two because of like loving it, but then also seeing the disparities within it. So wanting to disrupt it. It is at the core of a lot of how I write. It has been a beautiful foundation for me to build off of. My journey of really finding my way through music and through sound has been with the mission of welcoming everyone yeah. who didn't feel like they belonged Belong. in that space. Yeah. I wrote an opera last year. Wow. And it's something that I'd like dreamt of doing for oh, so yeah, long. Yeah, yeah. And then I was finally like given the opportunity. It was amazing because I always thought like opera is just like this thing that I just don't understand. It's oftentimes in like a whole other language yeah. and it's not really accessible for everyone. Yeah. And so wanting to disrupt the idea of what even an opera could be. And to welcome anyone into expanding the idea mm. of, you want to call this an opera? Call it an opera. Mm. This is your opera. That's right. This yeah. is your building. This is your space. This is your mind. This is your work. Create how yeah. you want to, yeah. you know? So I, I feel you on that. And I think for me, what I love about this is that there is no kind of right or wrong way of kind of telling a story mm. or expressing yourself. Yes. You know, and I think, you know, as a young kid, I always felt I couldn't go into a gallery or a museum mm -hmm. or all these spaces that I felt was quite elitist or I was afraid I, weren't, I didn't belong there. Mm -hmm. um, and I think what I want to try and do with the work, these works, is trying to say, hey, you know, you do belong in these spaces. You know, you yeah. can tell a story. You can, you know, like have an opinion on this Van Gogh piece of, or whatever mm -hmm. piece it is, you know. Inca, what's your dream project? I think for me, you know, like my dream project would be to have a Yinka Ilori sculpture park mm. um, that could sort of travel around the world. So any open spaces, fields, it will be a mixture of like sea uh, slides and, and, and swings and yeah. just kind of like magical space where you can just dream and just create joy with your loved ones. So yeah, it'd be a sculpture park. So if anyone's out there and they've got a park for me, <laughs> I have ideas for a sculpture park. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. What would be your dream project or, yeah? My dream project, I would really love to make a children's book filled with language, mm. with color, with visuals, but also sound. Mm. So it's interactive. So they're able to create sound and with the visuals that they're being given. For me as a kid, like textiles, like being able to feel stuff was so, it, it was connective for me. Mm. I kind of feel like we're going to collaborate, you know? You know, I think so you, too. Because you keep talking about I, sound. I, I, I sound. know. I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm really sort of like exper exper you know, experimenting with sound at the moment. So I feel yeah. like, we, I, 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 I'm not just saying it, but I actually believe we're going to collaborate on time. I know. Yeah, yeah. Are we going to connect? We're going to connect. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Thank you.